morning. Good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Lord God and Heavenly Father, for this beautiful morning that you've given to us, we thank you. I thank you. Father, as we are here, people of faith, the household of faith, that you have called us to be your light in the world, your witnesses to show forth your love for us by expressing our love for our neighbor. Father, we hear this very, very familiar and yet very important parable of the Good Samaritan, of how he gave of himself, of he gave of his treasures in order to help a man who could not help himself. Father, that is what you have called us as the church to do, to help those who are helpless. Father, I pray that as we are here to receive your gifts, that we are reminded that we too were helpless of ourselves and in our sin. That only by your gracious goodness have you brought us to faith and given to us salvation in heaven in the Lord Jesus Christ. In whose holy name we pray and worship you this morning. Alleluia. Amen. Amen. And yes, indeed, everybody, good morning, good morning. As always, it is a joy and a pleasure to be here. Thank you, thank you, everybody, for this time of worship and uh, uh, to celebrate a couple of very, very special events. This past week, uh, I believe... Um, July 7th and 8th of 1942 is when the uh, Lutheran Women's Missionary League actually came uh, into existence. And so this is actually the 80th anniversary this week. And uh, also to remember that the uh, National Youth Gathering, some 18,000 teenagers and adults are gathered down in Houston uh, for the Senate's National Youth Gathering, a big event. And uh, you can go online and watch the watch the uh, sessions when they're meeting in the they're meeting in the ballpark where the Astros play I don't I don't know the name of that park but that's where they are and uh, so uh, we pray that a lot of lives will be touched a lot of kids will grow in their faith and in their knowledge and understanding of the Lord and uh, uh, very thankful for that so with that then dear friends let's begin our worship we'll sing the opening hymn which is hymn number 660 Stand in 
dear friends, if you would, please rise and we'll use divine service setting two, or rather four, setting four this morning, that begins on page 203. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God in His mercy has given His only Son to die for you, and for His sake forgives you all of your sins, as a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by His Holy Spirit. I therefore forgive you all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, in your deep compassion, you rescue us from whatever may hurt us. Teach us to love you above all things and to love our neighbors as ourselves. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, please be seated. Thank you. Our first reading from the Holy Scriptures this morning is from the book of Leviticus in chapter 19, and I begin with verse 9. When you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not reap your field right up to its edge. Neither shall you gather the gleanings after your harvest. And you shall not strip your vineyard bare, neither shall you gather the fallen grapes of your vineyard. You shall leave them for the poor and for the sojourner. I am the Lord your God. You shall not steal, you shall not deal falsely, you shall not lie to one another, you shall not swear by my name falsely, and so profane the name of your God. I am the Lord. You shall not oppress your neighbor or rob him. The wages of a hired worker shall not remain with you all night until the morning. You shall not curse the deaf or put a stumbling block before the blind, but you shall fear your God. I am the Lord. You shall do no injustice in court. You shall not be partial to the poor or defer to the great. But in righteousness shall you judge your neighbor. You shall not go around as a slanderer among your people, and you shall not stand up against the life of your neighbor. I am the Lord. You shall not hate your brother in your heart, but you shall reason frankly with your neighbor, lest you incur sin because of him. You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against the sons of your own people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord, and this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And I turn this morning to a new epistle. We'll be considering St. Paul's epistle to the Colossians. And I read this morning from Colossians chapter 1. And I begin with verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and Timothy our brother, to the saints and faithful brothers in Christ at Colossae, grace to you and peace from God our Father. We always thank God for the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ when we pray for you, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all the saints because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. Of this you have heard before in the word of the truth, the gospel, which has come to you, as indeed in the whole world it is bearing fruit and increasing, as it also does among you, since the day you heard it and understood the grace of God in truth. Just as you learned it from Epaphras, our beloved father or fellow servant, he is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf and has made known to us your love in the Spirit. And so from the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will and all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might for all endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. 
He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of His beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And dear friends, let us rise as we read from the gospel of our Lord. And the Holy Gospel is according to St. Luke, the 10th chapter. Glory. Glory to you, O Lord. And I begin with verse 25. And behold, a lawyer stood up to put him to the test, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? And he answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, You have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. But he, desiring to justify himself, said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among robbers who stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a priest was going down the road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. He went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he set him on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And the next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper, saying, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, I will repay you when I come back. Which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers? He said, The one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said to him, You go and do likewise. And this is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. And dear friends, let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed, which is on page 206. Let us confess our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. Come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, please be seated. Thank you. Dear friends in Christ, this, um, this parable that we lovingly call and refer to as the parable of the Good Samaritan is indeed, as I know that you know me as well as you do, that this touches on an aspect of life and of our 
Christian faith that is near and dear to me. It's a very controversial aspect of our Christian faith. But it nonetheless wasn't just a story that Jesus told in order to confront this lawyer who was trying to, again, get Jesus to say something that he could use against him. But Jesus' purpose was not only to refute his question, but also to bring him to faith. So let me give you uh, a, a few ideas or a few scenarios. I know for a fact that this has happened to you. You're driving from Greenfield to Des Moines. You have some reason, you have uh, something to do in Des Moines. So as you go from Interstate 80 to Interstate 235 in town, and as you take one of the exits, whichever exit it is that you need to take, and you take the exit and you come to the traffic light, and inevitably, there's somebody there, isn't there? Right at the intersection, holding a beat up piece of cardboard that says, homeless veteran, any help is appreciated. What do you do? I'll just leave it at that. You go to Walmart. Even the Walmart, the, 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 the nice Walmart there in Jordan Creek. And you turn into the driveway, into the parking lot. And there you're confronted by a young woman with her three small children asking for help. What do you do? You're having dinner in a restaurant, lunch, breakfast, whoever. And as you're visiting with whoever you're with, perhaps your spouse or with a friend, and you can't help but overhear a conversation from the people who are at the booth next to you or to another table. And one of the people is talking about how their rent is coming due and they have no money. What do you do? What I think makes this a controversial aspect of our Christian faith is because it does tug on our heart. We know that people who are in need are everywhere. You don't have to go looking for them. They find you. They just happen to be right there where you're getting off the exit ramp and stopped at the traffic light. During our ministerial association meetings here in Greenfield, the Nottoway Valley Ministerial Association, this is by far the topic that gets the most discussion because we do have, as you know, a very, very active benevolence ministry that all of the churches, including you, are a part of. That you give generous gifts to the benevolence fund just to give it to Devine or one of the other tellers at the bank and she'll deposit it for you. Because the need is there and yes, I believe the need will get greater. I read an article and I saw a video clip this week referring to the same thing that we're just beginning to sort of do a, a, an assessment of the damage of the pandemic and how it has caused much, much more damage and devastation than so far we're yet aware of, that there's more to come. And not only with that, but also with everything being so expensive and everybody having to uh, watch their gasoline and watch their grocery bill, that the need becomes even greater. And so we find ourselves considering this parable that Jesus tells 
of a Samaritan, an outcast, an outsider, who very, very intentionally, I believe, the Lord used him as an example because the people of Israel, the priest and the Levite, who should have known better, who do what oftentimes we do, we look away, we ignore, we pretend like they're not there, and go on our way. But the Samaritan, the Samaritan who sees him, and what does he find? He finds a man half dead, totally and completely unable to do anything for himself. And that's, that's a key. That's a significant point. That he is totally dependent upon the benevolence, the gracious goodness of this stranger who does what it takes to not just approach him, not just attend to him, but to do what is necessary to restore him to health and life. And whatever the cost may be, he was willing and said and did pay that cost. A man half dead, restored to life because of the gracious goodness and the loving kindness of a stranger. In fact, not just a stranger, one who he would consider to be an enemy. What an incredible, incredible aspect of faith and kindness and compassion for humankind, for this man who he never knew, may have never ever seen again. Who knows? This, you know, Jesus didn't elaborate that much on the parable. But what he did say was that he took the man, took him to a shelter, took him to an inn, asked a man to care for him, paid for his care, paid for his food, paid for his medical care, paid for whatever it took to bring this man to health and healing again. And that is truly an amazing example, dear friends, of that same thing which has been done for all of us. Yes. We who could do nothing, nothing on our own behalf as far as our relationship with God. We were, as St. Paul says and writes, we were spiritually dead to our sin. There was nothing that we could do. There was nothing that we can contribute. We can't even hold our hand out. Rather, it is truly and totally by God's gracious benevolence, His loving kindness, that He has done everything for us. He has brought us from spiritual death to eternal life in His Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. This is what He's done. And the thing that, that I had the occasion to mention this past week as well is that as we think about this man who could do nothing for himself, that's hard for us to get our head around because it is so counterintuitive to what we think Christianity or what any religion is that in order for us to be right with God, that God may do His part and we have to do our part and we as Lutherans say no. We are like this beat up half dead man. There is nothing we can do. Thanks be to God and our Lord Jesus Christ that He is the Good Samaritan, the stranger, literally the enemy for those who live in their sin. And yet He has done everything, everything to bring us life, health, spiritual health, as well as the joy and the peace that we have in our temporal health in terms of our lives here on earth. It is truly a, it's a paradox, yes. It, 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 again, it doesn't make sense because our, our own humanity wants to always fall back and say that I have what I have because I worked hard for it, and yes, that's true. And thanks be to God that He has given to us health and strength and wisdom and, and, and skills to do amazing things, but to know that for many people, that's just simply not the case. They need our help. And even for those occasions where tragedy may come 
and knock us on our feet that we can do nothing without the help of others. We truly are, dear friends, we are unique as the Christian faith, as the Christian church, to reach out, to help, to serve, to be benevolent, to show forth God's loving kindness in our lives and how we carry forth ourselves, how we relate both to our friends as well as to total strangers, and to show forth that glorious goodness of what Jesus has come and done for us. Jesus said in Matthew 25 that the least as you've done to these, my brethren, you have done unto me. So when you're in Des Moines the next time <laughs> and you take the exit ramp to wherever you're needing to go and you see that homeless veteran standing there with his beat up sign or when you see some other occasion to help somebody to show forth the love of God in the Lord Jesus Christ that we especially as Christian people we who understand and know the significance of this parable of this story that Jesus said and how it pertains and how it applies to our ministry and in this day and age in which we're seeing things that we've never seen in our lifetime with the pandemic and the aftermath that has come from it and, and all of the damage that's been, been done as a result of it and probably more still to come that we are not aware of yet. That we go to our Lord in prayer, we receive His blessed gifts of sacrament, of word, of salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ. That you, dear friends, are the people that the world depends upon even though they don't know it. <laughs> And thanks be to God. Because it isn't that I was intending to just browbeat you today. You are generous people, dear friends. You do do a lot. And that even as we have needs right here in Greenfield and Adair County and, and around the world, that you do show forth the loving kindness that you touch lives change hearts and minds and turn people from unbelief to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? How? when they're given a quilt that keeps them warm at night. Lutherans have that reputation, by the way, if you haven't heard this before. Lutherans keep the world warm. And that really is true. Just a mention for a couple of items here to, again, reiterate what I said earlier, that congratulations and happy anniversary, ladies of the Lutheran Women's Missionary League, back in July 7th and 8th of 1942 during the war. That group of ladies, and even there, that's a pretty good-sized group of ladies, met in Chicago and organized the name that they have kept for the entire 80 years, Lutheran Women's Missionary League, and for that entire 80 years, you have shown forth the glorious goodness in your mission work and the benevolence that comes with that. You have touched the lives of millions of people. Thank you, dear ladies, thank you for your glorious goodness in putting into action what the parable of the Good Samaritan serves to show us. Again, as I mentioned, just uh, uh, because it is important that our Synod's National Youth Gathering down in Houston, I pray for the mosquitoes down there <laughs> and the heat that, uh, that they'll have to contend with, but all of their venues are all air conditioned and so hopefully they won't have to be outside for very long. That some 18,000, that's the number we hear, some 18,000 kids and their adults, leaders are gathered in Houston. Over 400 uh, kids and adults are there from our own district, Iowa District West. And so we pray for great things to happen during that time. They meet until next Wednesday. And so we keep the young people in our prayers and their adult leaders. And so we persevere, we continue, because the need is always there. 
There will always be those who are physically and spiritually half dead. And that you, dear friends, you just might be the person to restore them, not just to physical health, but to show forth Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ, and your love and your compassion and your benevolence for those who cannot help themselves, just like us and our Lord Jesus. Alleluia, dear friends. Alleluia. Amen and amen. Lord God and Heavenly Father, Lord, you have so richly and abundantly blessed us. Father, you have given to us that which we cannot give to ourselves. You've given to us the saving faith that looks to the cross and there sees and finds our Savior, the Lord Jesus, who gave his life for us to redeem us, to pay for our sin, a debt we could not pay for ourselves. And that you have blessed us now with faith and forgiveness and heaven and eternal life. That as we prepare to partake of the blessed sacrament, that here again we receive your gifts of word, of sacrament, of faith, of forgiveness, of salvation. All of this that we could not do for ourselves that you have done for us. Father, we do ask for your special blessings to be with the ladies of our synod of the Lutheran Women's Missionary League as they celebrate their 80th anniversary this week to thank you for their glorious mission-minded goodness and for all they have done for these 80 years to touch the lives of people literally around the world. And we rejoice with that and ask for you to continue to bless them as they carry forth with their mission-minded work. Lord, we ask for your special blessings as well to be with the youth of our church that are gathered in Houston, to be with their leaders that as they hear the proclamation of salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ, that they may grow, as St. Paul writes in his letter to the Colossians, to grow in their knowledge and their understanding as well as in their faith in the Lord Jesus. And that in his holy name we pray and Thank you. Alleluia. Amen and amen. And dear friends, the service of the sacrament begins on page 208. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he has now risen from the dead, and lives and reigns to all eternity. All who believe in Him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify Your glorious name, evermore praising You and singing. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment, you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve, who ate the forbidden fruit, and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet, in your great mercy, you promised salvation by a second Adam, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and made his cross a life-giving tree for all 
all who trust in Him. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of His cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in His body and blood. Hear us as we pray in His name and as He has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat, for this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them as well and said, Drink from this cup, all of you, for this is the New Testament which is in my blood and is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. <coughs> strengthen you and keep you in that one true faith to life everlasting. 
Go in peace and serve the Lord. Your sins are forgiven. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat, for this is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which is the bread of heaven and is given for you. Our Lord's precious body and blood always strengthen you and keep you in that one true faith to life everlasting. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Your sins are forgiven. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, welcome to the Lord's table. Amen. Take and eat, for this is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, which is the bread of heaven and is given for you. Our Lord's precious body and blood always strengthen you and keep you in that one true faith to life everlasting. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Your sins are forgiven. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Welcome to the Lord's table, dear friends. Take and eat, for this is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which is the bread of heaven and is given for you. precious body and blood always strengthen you and keep you in that one true faith to life everlasting. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Your sins are forgiven. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Given and shed for their mission. Our Lord's precious body and blood always strengthen you and keep you in that one true faith to life everlasting. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Your sins are forgiven. Alleluia. Amen and amen. Dear friends, welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat, for this is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which is the bread of heaven and is given for you. Lord and Savior. Our Lord's precious body and blood always strengthen you and keep you in that one true faith to life everlasting. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Your sins are forgiven. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat, for this is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which is the bread of heaven and is given for you. And the Lord bless you and keep you in your baptism. And the Lord bless you and keep you in your baptism. Amen. Amen. Take and eat the body of Christ. And our Lord's precious body and blood always strengthen you and keep you in that one true faith to life everlasting. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith, to life everlasting. Go in peace. Amen. Amen. God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And the Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. And dear friends, our closing hymn is hymn number 937.